Hello viewers, uh, good evening to you all. I trust you had a good day. Welcome to my channel. I'm your regular host on this channel or on this show, Shobaya Mudupa Snares. I remain Shobaya Mudupa Johnson. I'm the CEO of Shobaya Mudupa Snares and November's Farms. Uh, yesterday we started a series uh, on snare terminology or some terms or some jargons or some languages that we make use of in snake farming. Uh, yes, we started that series yesterday. And then the reason why I decided to come up with uh, uh, that is because uh, I will be embarking on a series uh, or teaching or lecture, yes, on this channel very, very soon, uh, probably before the end of this week, yes. I want us to talk about snares, uh, how to go about snares, uh, what are what you need to succeed in snares, and everything that you need to know about snares, A to Z. You know, so uh, in the course of the future or the the anticipated uh, uh, series that uh, I just spoke about, I'll be making use of those jargons. You know, in the course of the teaching, I'll be mentioning one or two of them you know so and then for you to comprehend what i'm talking about that's why i decided to come up with some of the terms or the jargons or the technical words that we make we often make use of in snail farming you know so uh, yesterday we spoke about uh, snailry the definition of snail so when i mention snailry what do i mean so when i mention hermaphrodite what do i mean when I mention uh, nuptia, what do I mean? When I mention ostivation or hibernation, what do I mean? So we uh, look at those four uh, words or those four terms yesterday. So maybe for a quick recap, uh, I should just tell us um, what those four really means. When you talk about snellery, you know, snellery is a place where uh, uh, snares are kept or where they are being bred and fattened you know for market or for consumption so it means when I mention the word snare I'm referring to a snail house I'm referring to that housing I'm referring to that uh, facility that you have where you keep your snares that's the definition of snailry then uh, when you mention the word amyphrodite no, a my product is a when, a when a person or an animal has both male and female sex organ in the same body. It could be normal, it could be abnormal in some cases. Okay? For instance, in human beings, it is abnormal for you to see a man that is having both male and female organ, sex organ. So that means it is an abnormal case. But in snares, it is very, very, very normal, 100%. For you to see a snail that is an animal product because that's their nature that's where god created them okay so when you see a snail every snail that you see be it ashantina marginata ashantina ovum uh, 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 ashantina fulica ashantina 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 you know, all of them they're all animal products and that's why we always Tell people that a snail farm is profitable because when you have 20 snails, potentially the 20 snails will lay egg for you. Okay, especially for instance, okay, as a case study, let me let's make use of a uh, Achancina marginata ovum for instance. So when you have Achancina marginata ovum, uh, it gives you on the average, let me say, seven between six to seven eggs per clutch, and it gives you three. Uh, uh, it lays three times in a year, okay. That's like quarterly, okay. So it gives you on the average six to seven eggs per clutch or per time, and it gives you uh, uh, it repeats that uh, uh, process three times in a year. So if it gives you, let's say, six eggs per time, multiply by three, that's about 18 eggs. From a single snail. Of course, it can be more than that. That's why I use the word the average. Okay, so when two snails comes together, eh, 
So when this one, when snail A and snail B come together and they mate, hmm, uh, after that exercise, they both go their separate ways and then they both, you know, lay egg for you. So that has been said yesterday. So it is just a recap. Now, when we talk about nuptia, is one of the characteristics of snail. Okay, what well, that simply means that snails are active at night. Their our, our night is like their own day. That's why you often see snails moving about in the night, even in the wild, natural setting. You see them moving in the night. That's when you see all the snail hunters going to the bush to hunt for snails. You can't see snails during the day in the afternoon moving about. You, you hardly see it. But to all snail farmers, you know, uh, you can condition your snails to be active even during the day. In the afternoon, if you want your snails to eat, if you want them to be active, you, there's a way you can condition them. They can move about even in the afternoon because they are in confinement. They are not in the uh, wild. Okay, then we spoke about ostivation or hibernation. That's when your snails are dormant, that's when they are not active. And then uh, to show you that they are not active, they now cover up their meat or the surface with a, a whitish uh, substance, you know, uh, uh, that look like cartilage or like a, a, I don't know, like a ceramic kind of. You know, so I hope I can get okay for the purpose of this teaching. I'll make sure that I keep uh, one or two snails separate, and I won't attend to them so that they can form that uh, uh, you know, to show you and uh, how it usually look like. Okay, so I will have to make uh, that experiment so as to show you so how it will look like when you see such on your farm. It means that snail. Is not eating, is not drinking water, is not growing. In fact, it's losing weight. Okay, so it should never be found, you know, on your farm that a snail is uh, hibernating, is not encouraging. It means your management practice is low. Your snail should not form such cyst at all. Your snail should always be active. They should be eating. They should be drinking. They should be healthy. But once you see your snail. Covering up its meat, you know, especially during the dry season, that's when you even see it even in the wild. So, not to talk of you that you are a snake farmer, you have 100% control of uh, the farm, okay? So, your snake shouldn't hibernate at all. At all. So, those were the four things that we spoke about yesterday, okay? So, thank you. Now, today, I want us to talk about uh, uh, incubation 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 you know, does the same way uh, we incubate our poultry eggs you know your chicken eggs your turkey eggs you know uh, your dog's egg so it's still the same word incubation and it means the same thing for us to, you know the incubation means uh, a process at which uh, 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 eggs are being kept you know at a certain temperature you know uh, to for a certain number of days, then the offspring comes out. But in snail farming, uh, the process is not as the same thing as that of poultry. Okay, because in snail farming, <clears throat> when you harvest your eggs, when you pick up your eggs, you keep them inside soil or inside sawdust or inside the uh, dry plantain leaves or inside cutting wool okay why I mentioned those four uh, materials is because they can retain water okay they can retain water uh, loamy soil will retain water sawdust can retain water um, dried plantain leaves or banana leaves can retain water as well as uh, cutting wool so when you pick up your eggs, you insert them, you make a shallow, uh, 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 you dip into the soil or into, you know, into, okay, let me, for the soil, you dip into the soil 
uh, with probably about one centimeter or thereabouts, you pour the eggs and then you now cover it up with soil lightly. You don't cover it, you don't bury the eggs because if you bury the eggs too deep, it will be difficult for the snail, for the baby snails to come out. Okay, so that's why you have to cover it lightly and then probably, um, every two, two days or thereabouts, so you can be wetting the the eggs you don't have to water lock the egg because if the water is too much the eggs will lose its potency and if the eggs becomes dry it loses its potency so it's very technical so you have to learn how to do it okay so we still practicalize it so we are just talking about some terms here now so we, we, are, we are we are not embarking on the practical aspect of it yet and of course, uh, in my previous video, I think, uh, yes, I've done something like that before, you know. So, but for the sake of this proper training, so we see and back on it and then I will show you how to go about it. So, incubation is that process of you picking the eggs and burying the egg, you know, anticipating to have a baby snake coming out at the end of three weeks or four weeks at most. Okay, so that's the definition of, excuse me, uh, incubation. So uh, just as I said, it's not um, compulsory that you make use of loamy soil. You can use uh, plantain leaves, you can use um, sawdust, you can use cotton wool. Okay, thank you. Now, Ashlyn, Ashlyn, uh, when you talk of Ashlyn, what is Ashlyn? In snail or in snailery or in snail farming, Ashlyn are referred to as a, a young snails, baby snails that comes out of their eggs. The baby snails that comes out of the egg, they are referred to as Ashlyns. Okay, baby snails that comes out from the egg are referred to as Ashlyns. Okay, now um, I have to talk about mulching material. Mulching material. You often hear a snail farmer telling you that okay, you need mulching material on your farm so that snake can hide under it, so that it can uh, provide coolness, or you know, uh, or to provide humidity for your snakes and all that. So what are we referring to uh, when we mention the word mulching material? So much material, those material, it could be anything that you use, you know, you put on your, you know, in your snail house or in your snailery, wherein your snails can hide under them, okay? And that's why most snail farmers use uh, plantain leaves, dry plantain leaves. So, because in the wild, when you want to hunt for snails in the wild, you often see those snails, they hide under uh, plantain uh, leaves or under they just you, if you hardly find snail you know on the surface you hardly unless if it is raining or if it has just stopped raining and then the the snail is migrating from one point to the other but if you are really hunting for snail you must find snail hiding under something and that's because they love cool place so we often use a uh, uh, plantain leaves, dry one, you know, as a much material, and that's because uh, plantain leaves or banana leaves, uh, dry one can retain water. It can retain, you know, uh, when you dip inside water, so it can retain the moisture for for some times without necessarily getting easily dried. So that's what we refer to as much material. And of course, you can deduce what suits you, but generally speaking, uh, you often see every snail farmer using uh, plantain leaves as their mulching material. Um, then, uh, soiler system, okay, because I mentioned the word uh, mulching material and plantain leaves, so of course, uh, that's why I'm, you know, I want to talk about soiler system. Soiler system is so that uh, uh, you are not using soil at all on your farm. Okay, I have some 
trenches that uh, I don't even use soil at all. You know, I make use of plantain leaves, solely plantain leaves. So uh, the plantain leaves, you know, just as I said, they can retain water. So I have them, you know, uh, in volume. So I put them there and then I wet them regularly. So the snails hide under them. So the, 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 the plantain leaves or the mushroom etc. now serve as my base, you know, for them. Okay. So you can, it's not compulsory for you to have uh, soil, you know, on, on your farm. It's not compulsory. You can go soilless. Now, organic snake farming. When we talk about organic snake farming, this means that uh, you are not making use of any chemical or any steroid or any uh, growth enhancing hormone on your farm. It means you are feeding your snails, you are catering for your snails organically, naturally. It means they, they, they are eating natural food, you know, everything about them is natural, no chemical attached. Okay, so that's what we mean by organic snail farming. Because there are some snail farm that you get to, they are not organic. Uh, they still make use of some, you know, I'm not, it's not wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. But uh, if you are going organically, it means, you know, your snails are being fed with natural feed. You know, no chemical, nothing. Okay. Now, when we talk about P-O-L, point of lay, P-O-L. So this refers to as snails that are yet to lay. You know, uh, I, I, I often use the word, I liken them to teenagers in human beings. When you see a teenager, a teenager most of the time, you know, are, are not expected to be mothers or fathers. Okay, so uh, 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 P-O-L or point of lay are those snails that are yet to lay, they are about to attain, you know, that age at which they can mate and lay. Of course, uh, just as I always tell my client, you know, snail farming, this sector is not yet structured. So what you call your point of lay might not be what I call my own point of lay. Okay, but that's always liking them to teenagers. You know, a teenager of 13 will always be referred to as a teenager. Whereas a teenager of 19 is still a teenager, but one is mature than the other. Okay, so teenager is teenager, but there's age difference in teenager. So that's exactly how it is in POL. Okay, point of lay is point of lay. It means they've not started laying there, but that they are all point of lay doesn't mean they are all uh, of the same age. Okay, so that's POL. Uh, then when we talk about cannibalism, cannibalism, cannibalism is that process wherein snail eat one another. You know, it's not normal for us to have that or for us to experience that on our farms. But sometimes it happens. And how does this happen when you overcrowd your snails? When they, when you have snails in a housing that is too small for them, so they can cannibalize on each other. Or when your snails are being starved with calcium, okay, they can prey or cannibalize on each other because they, 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 you know, they are looking for calcium so they can cannibalize on each other. Then bloating. bloating. What is bloating? Bloating is that uh, a process or that uh, condition wherein your snail, the snail may get bigger and just very large. And then when you touch it, it's it's so tender. And uh, this often happens when uh, your snails, uh, you know, overdrink, or when they are exposed to too much of carbohydrate feed. Okay, and that's why we often tell people that uh, when you want to give your snail drinker, let it be such a flat, shallow one. It shouldn't be so deep, and then uh, the water shouldn't be so much. Because when they over drink, they get bloated and that results to a mortality. Okay, so I, I think for now, let me stop at this. And then uh, probably tomorrow I will come up with more 
uh, more terms or more uh, technical terms that we use in snail farming. So I hope I've been able to educate you to some extent, you know, via this video of some of the terms that we often use in snail farming. So can you uh, tell people about this video, especially snail farmer that you know, or those that want to learn about snail farming, uh, subscribe to this channel so that whenever I drop new video, you can be notified. And please comment, share, okay, ask questions, uh, or you know, and then uh, probably if there's anything that you want me to talk about, please, you are free to mention it. I hope uh, uh, to attend to If I, I will even attend to it, I'm not hoping I will attend to every of your questions, every of your comments, and all that. So from this stable of November's farm and Shoba Mulukwe Snakes, I'm wishing you all the best. Bye for now.